Uh, hi, I'm Hoshi. Can you all hear me? Yes. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to have a class about links slash command bursts. And let's start about talking why we call them links. Uh, there used to be a mod modules called warfare links uh, that were in need for many years. But there were a lot of problems with them. The main thing being that they could be used off-grid. You could sit anywhere in the system and boost your fleet. And that was not very popular because you could, f for some time, you could sit inside a post shield, completely safe. Later they nerfed that, but you could still safe, sit in a deep safe or somewhere. And there's basically nothing your opponent can do to stop you. So about two years ago, uh, CCP completely changed them and made them into command bursts. But you players being conservative still call them links. So in a fleet advert or like in a ping, it will ask for links. But what you want in that case is command bursts, not actually links. Uh, command bursts work by giving up a pulse surrounding the ship, similar to a smart bomb. But instead of damaging uh, the ships around it, it will give them boosts depending on which links and what which command bursts are used. Uh, the range of a burst is also dependent on scales and ship type, and such, uh, and also the strength of, uh, of a burst. Uh, the modules used, I'm going to link them in split. There are five different modules with a T2 version of each. You have the shield command burst. Uh, the skirmish command burst, uh, the information command burst, the armor command burst, which we don't generally use because we don't have any armor fleets, and finally the mining foreman burst. And this uh, class is not going to talk much about the mining part, just mention that it exists. Now, uh, these modules don't do anything by themselves. You have to be loaded with charges. And for each type of uh, burst, there are three different charges. For example, for shielding, you have uh, active shielding, shield extension, and shield harmonizing. And they provide different bonuses. Active shielding is uh, cycle time and cap usage of Shield repairs, shield extension is shield HP, and harmonizing is uh, resists. Do note that resists are still stacking penalized with your hardeners, so they actually give the least bonus in practice. Uh, so to give all the different uh, bonuses, you need a lot of bursts, command bursts, and most ships can only fit one or two. There are ways to fit more, but that will redu usually reduce the tank of a ship, which is often not so good. So to provide a full coverage of bursts in a fleet, you need lots of ship doing it. And this is one of the reasons why I'm doing this class is because you can actually start providing these bursts in certain fleets. It depends on wh what fleet it is, with very little skill training. You're talking like 30 minutes of skill training to start b boosting a fleet. If you're in a Ferox or Hurricane fleet, that is. And this is because we're looking at ships. What ships can fit this command burst? Uh, the main basic ship is the battle cruisers. So all battle cruisers, which means uh, in our case it would be Ferox, generally Ferox's or Hurricanes. The, we also have a fit for a uh, Drake, which is used to boost uh, Logia only. But the thing with Ferox's and hur Hurricanes is that they can all fit a single boost without any uh, anything really changing on them and provide a bonus to the fleet with really no cost at all. And especially with Ferox's, this is something that basically everyone sh really should look into doing. Uh, for a more advanced, you have the command ships, usually the Vulture or Claymore for our fleets. Uh, there's also the Tech Free Cruisers, Tengu and Loki in our cases, and uh, there's the Command Destroyers, Stork and Bifrost. Uh, they are also used for bushing, of course, but can also be used to just for links and a command burst. 
uh, for mining you have a porpoise, orca and rorqual, and uh, as well as the ca other capital ships, you have uh, carriers, supercarriers, and titans can all fit links. And uh, usually only the carrier, uh, normal carriers do in that case. Um, to use these bursts, uh, you need certain skills. And very few train these skills for a very simple reason. They are ca charisma primary uh, learning attribute. And that means they take a long time to train because no one puts any attribute points into charisma. If you want to max out your training, there's also a lot of skill points needed. Uh, full, fully maxing out the fleet support tree is roughly uh, 15 million skill points. The, you can probably get away with maybe 10, 8, 10, if you are, are, um, even if you are a dedicated link pilot. But just to get started, you need 30 minutes of training. You need leadership. Let's see if I can drag it. Leadership, level 1. You need, and you need uh, the appropriate uh, command skill. So if, if you want to boost shields, you need shield command, level 1. That's it. That's what you need to start boosting. Nothing else. And that's what makes boosting so easy to get into. Now there are lots of skills that can boost these boosts, but they actually, like, uh, if you want to get the next level, you have to train a lot of skills actually, because most of them do very little early on. Like leadership, uh, training that higher increases range. There's also uh, wing command and fleet command. This also increases the range and they do nothing else. But in a normal fleet, you're going to be anchored up on the FC and the base range you get in a battle cruiser is I think 25 kilometers, 22 kilometers, which is enough to cover most people in the fleet. So you don't actually need more range. Uh, you have a shield command skill that are linked. There's also the information and skirmish command for those types of links. Uh, they increase uh, the, the time the boosts are active. But the thing is, uh, the modules have a cycle time of one minute and the base time how long the skills are active is also one minute the boosts are active so there is you don't really get anything from increasing how long uh, the boosts are active because you can always reapply them just set the, bo uh, the burst charges to, the burst modules to uh, auto cycle and well, reapply a boost after a minute so the, bo the time it doesn't really do anything there is a skill called the Command Burst Specialist. That only reduces the reload time. Normally it takes one minute to reload. You can get it down to 30 seconds. But you don't have to reload generally. Uh, one burst uh, module can fit 300 charges with one minute per charge. That's five hours of boosting, assuming no tie-dye. When if it's tie-dye, there's even longer. Uh, so there is really no reason to reload in the normal circumstances. You don't, you don't need that skill either. There is this skill and the diff, uh, appropriate versions for skirmish and information and stuff. These are important, they actually do things, but you need uh, shield command five before you can train it. You need actually to do a fair bit of training before you can train this. This increases the strength of boosts. And if you want tech two boost, you need this at Plus, you need leadership at level 5. Hello! Uh, so, just getting started, very easy, but taking it to the next level requires a lot of skills and especially a lot of time because you don't usually have charisma as a high attribute. Uh, the character I'm using in this video does not have particularly good boosting skills, just average, but uh, I have my normal boost character has more or less maxed out. So if you see in this video, you'll see I like I got the activity tracker for bursts for charges. 
the boosting. So that's because it's some wrong character I'm doing this class with. Um, so if you are flying a Ferox, the only thing you need to do is replace the drone link argumenter with a boost, and a command burst. And if you're going to just uh, have one burst, which one should you get? Well, it depends on what we need, of course, but if you just want to like get started, I would recommend either um, rap skirmish and getting uh, rapid deployment or uh, information for sensor optimization because those are the two that actually does the most for the fleet. Now there are probably going to be FCs here that might say that they want other links but if I'm looking at what actually do the most for the fleet those are at low levels those are the two. Uh, rapid deployment increases your uh, MVD and afterburner speed and sensor optimization increases your lock speed and lock range which is the most important one because both Hurricanes and Ferroxes can shoot longer than they can normally lock. Uh, if you have a fleet that already has a lot of boosts in it, usually an information link is good because the two link uh, burst types that are usually not covered by, even if you have lots of command ships and stuff, are two information links. It's uh, uh, electronic hardening and electronic strength, strengthening, I think. Check. Electronic superiority. Um, hardening increases your sensor strength, so it gets harder to jam. Uh, superiority increases the strength of ECM ships and stuff like that. And those two are usually not covered by command ships, like you have maybe one ship covering the shield links, and one for skirmish, and one for sensor optimization, and then these two are usually left. So if you have a are in a fleet with lots of boosting, those are good start. If you are a ship with fleet with little boosting, get either sensor optimization or rapid deployment. There are other ways to increase how much you boost. Uh, there is an implant. Called Mindlink. There is one for each kind and there is also a faction version. It covers two different kinds, so Kaldari covers the same that uh, Kaldari command ships get bonuses to, which is shield and information. Uh, but we, normally we don't use these because th those are really expensive. But the normal mine links are just, I think, 30, 50 million maybe, so it's not overly expensive. And But they do have very high skill requirements, so that's just if you're a dedicated pilot. Uh, they require cybernetics 5 and the respective command specialist skill at 5. So, yeah. The different level, like, if you're looking at the base uh, boost, it depends on what, uh, what you're boosting, but most of them get about 8%. And if you max out with everything, including mindling and such, it goes up to about 22%. So it's a good increase, but it's not a, like all the world different. An 8% boost is still a good boost. An 8% is much better than nothing. Uh, one thing to keep in mind when you're boosting is that activating uh, a boost gives you an aggression timer, a weapon timer for one minute. That means you can't dock, you can't tether, you can't jump gates. So you need to make sure to turn off the links or bursts, bursts uh, in time to do those things. Usually in fleets, the FC will call, like uh, links up, and when he's preparing to uh, withdraw, he'll call like links down. But it's up to you to, as a pilot, to make sure to pay attention to this. And sometimes activating links, even if FC hasn't asked for it, can be a very good idea. Like uh, you have just jumped the gate, there's bubbles, you're running away. Well, rapid uh, deployment will make everyone faster so they can run away faster out of the bubbles. Always worth it. But do keep in mind this uh, aggression timer because getting stuck on a gate because you for a minute because you forgot to turn off your uh, 
command bursts is not fun. I have done it way too many times, sadly. It's very easy to just miss turning them off. Uh, they use a little bit of cap, but not in a, not a big amount. Usually if you're in a command ship, you have like a NOS to uh, NOS a friendly ship, but to keep it up. But in a non-command ship, if you're like just in a Ferox, then if you're really starved for cap, just turn it off. You're, you're just a bonus. You're not there for main links anyway. Um, one more thing to keep in mind is that for a, a ship to actually get the boost, not only does he have to be in the fleet and in range, but his ship must also be not be invulnerable. Now, usually this is not really a problem. I mean, if you are sitting with the fleet, fleet is anchored on the FC, you have every, every no ship is going to be invulnerable. But for example, if you warp in with the fleet, as, uh, while you're in warp, if you're close to the ships, it actually works to boost them. But as soon as you land, all the ships that becomes invulnerable. And they don't, don't become, uh, they are vulnerable for, I don't know, how long, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, or until they actually do anything, like move. So if you, like, in a big fleet, big, big fight, the FC warps the fleet into the fight, and if you immediately start the boosts, then only half the fleet will actually receive them, because half the fleet hasn't started moving yet, they haven't clicked anchor on the FC yet, or stuff like that. So wait a few seconds to get people to start moving. Otherwise, yeah, they won't get the burst until the next cycle, of course, which is a minute later. Uh, anyone have any questions? Could you repeat again, situationally, which, you know, large fleet, small fleet, recommended for new FCs to use in a ship? Uh, do you mean which bur links or which ships or? Sorry, yeah, which uh, which um, which burst? You you went through quickly and said, in you know, small fleet this, large fleet that. I didn't really say fleet size, but the two bursts that gives the most important bonuses for now talking about uh, Ferox and Hurricane fleets are rapid deployment, a skirmish boost because it gives uh, increased micro warp drive speed. And being able to move around the fleet is really important. Uh, the other one is uh, sensor optimization, which is an uh, information warfare link, which increased uh, lock range, most importantly, because both hurricanes and ferroxes can shoot longer than they can lock. And I don't know how many fleets I've been on where the FC has said, like, shoot that guy, and half the fleet says, no, we're not in range, we can't lock him. Well because we didn't have information sensor optimization boost. That's the only reason we couldn't do it. That happens all the time, so it's really important. Thank you. Is, Is there a there... class going on? Yes. Uh, Hi, Night Jade asks, Is it common to boost with a command SC in a cruiser or battle cruiser fleet? Uh, sometimes, usually not. Uh, in the command... Battle cruiser fleet, the command assets are usually mostly for uh, bushing, that is uh, teleporting ships around the battlefield, but they can provide secondary boost as well. Mostly it's uh, command ships or in some cases normal battle cruisers. Like I said earlier, we have a Logi boosting Drake that's supposed to anchor with a Logi and just boost them. Also defender missiles? Against in a BC fleet, uh, yeah, defended missiles are good for on uh, command assist as well, yeah. But usually, it's not difficult to fit like one or two links on a command assist, especially not one link. So, I mean, if, if you have a command assist and you're not fitting for DPS, then you might as well have a link on it. Uh, I'm not sure, I think both. Talvars and Cormans have sensor boosters in their fits, so they're supposed to be able to reach locking range without the boosts, but it's still good to have. It's always good to have. Especially if there are uh, newer people in the fleet that might not have as good uh, skills, so their locking range is lower than normally. Uh, 
Oh, I forgot to link this thing. Let's see here. Uh, uh, there we go. There we go. Uh, normally, the amount of uh, links you can fit to a ship is fixed based on the ship class. So uh, command assist can fit fit one, uh, battle cruisers normal can fit one, uh, command ships can fit two. But by using these links, mid command processors, you, they increase one per each. But of course, they take up link uh, rig slot, which you normally have a like a shield HP rig. So fitting them reduces your tank. So Brave used to have uh, command ship uh, fits with three links, but have more or less completely moved over to two link fits to not reduce the tank of the ships. Then to link a hurricane fit. That's the official boost hurricane fit. Uh, sadly, the hurricane is very limited in fitting, so it has to forgo one gun to be able to fit. Uh, a burst, while the Ferox can just replace the li uh, drone link argumenter. Uh, I recommend either a Ferox or a Hurricane. Replace one of your high slots with a boost a burst and just go with that. You don't have to like go for a command ship directly. A single link, perfect. Uh, Command uh, deaths are much more high skill intensive, and if you run one of those, you're, you're going to be expected to boost as uh, and turn, teleport things around the battlefield and stuff as well, not just provide boost probably. But if you are in a Ferox with a link, then your DPS, you just provide the links on the side, so really easy to get started. And if you die, it's not such a big loss compared to if you lose a command ship. So it's also good to get used to it, remembering to turning off your bursts so you can jump gates and stuff. Because even, I mean, I have boosted for years and I still forget that and get stuck on the wrong side of the gates. So get used to that early with a cheap ship, like a battlecruiser. Relatively cheap in this game, anyway. Any other questions? Uh, what's the class subject? Just lead links? Uh, links and command bursts. Okay. Slash command bursts. Just a normal Ferox, replace the drone link argument, replace the drone link argumenter with a link. Nothing else changes. The drone link argumenter is. doesn't matter. Like just the fleet fit. Uh, let's see if I have it. Uh, what are you looking for, Hoshi? Oh. There you have a st standard uh, BNI, or standard uh, Voltron Ferox, but with command link instead in one of eyes. Yeah, bring charges. But uh, the official fits, if you look on a wiki, have 900 charges of each kind in them. You don't need that many. 300 will, as I said earlier, last you five hours. So don't get more than that. There is no point. You should have variety though, so you can maybe switch on the fly in case someone has to leave or something. Yeah, yeah, it's good to have all kinds, but you don't have need 900 of each kind. 300 of each kind is more than enough. Yes, correct. And that's the, like, the only reason to have to train the command burst specialist skill. 
that reduces reload time is if you need to switch links during a battle. But yeah, I mean, it's not common, so it's not an important skill early on. Uh, one thing, uh, if you are in a dedicated uh, like link ship, like a command ship, there is a channel called legacy links that is used to uh, coordinate which person is running which links and stuff like that. But if you're just going with Ferox with a single link with low link skills, then it's not that important. Just take, pick a link. It's your backup, your extra, but you still provide a bonus to the fleet. And if you want to see how what Burst looks like, you can just undock in GE. I'm boosting outside there. Uh, if you want to actually see the bonuses, you need to uh, untether because otherwise you won't get the bonus because you are invulnerable. So lock something up. And there's a minute uh, recharge. Uh, yeah, Let's say I have a question. question. Yep. If you pause your links while you're uh, warping with your fleet, does the, do your fleet members get the links? If they are within range, which they can be in warp. If, so if, if everyone has your... aligned and you warp as a fleet warp, then yes, you can boost them while in warp, yes. Are you 100% sure that works? Yes, I am. Okay. But as I said earlier, when you land, you're invulnerable. Once you, once you exit the warp, you're invulnerable for a couple of seconds until you actually do something. So if you're too quick with the boosts after you landed, then most of the fleet won't actually get the boost. You have to wait a little bit after you landed. This is also good to know when, if you ever jump into a smart bomb camp. You are vulnerable to the smart bombs while in warp, but as soon as you land, unless you move, you are invulnerable to the smart bombs. Very strange interaction, but that's how it works. Anything else? In that case... Uh, do link links aggress you, FC? Yes, they give uh, an aggression timer for one minute. So you won't be able to jump gates, you won't be able to tether, you won't be able to dock. So make sure to turn them off if you need to do one of those things. How many maximum links can you have affecting you at one time, let's see? Um, one of each kind. Uh, yeah, I didn't mention that. Uh, if there are more than one kind, if like two different ships provide the same bo uh, bonus, uh, like both two ships have uh, rapid deployment, uh, the strongest one will always be in effect. And then if the strongest one time out, it will remember the weaker one and apply that one until the stronger one is uh, reapplied. So there is nothing wrong with doubling up on links. You, you don't, it doesn't do anything as long as the stronger link is there, but it doesn't hurt any either. No, what I mean is, is it possible to have skirmish, armor, shield, and info links running at the same time? Uh, I mean, this ship I'm sitting on now has one shield, one skirmish, and one uh, information. So, yeah, sure. Three, three is, is possible. Uh, three I'm is not possible. Sure of uh, three is possible on a, a battlecruiser. I think you can do four on a. Yeah, you can do four on a command ship. No, no, what I mean is. I know you can fit four links. What I mean is, can you have all four of the different kind active at the same time? I think, I'm not sure, but I think you can't. I think you can have a maximum of nine links, which is suppose you have shield, you have all three of the shield. If you have skirmish, you can have all three of the skirmish. If you have info, you can have all three of the info, but I don't think you can have armor along with that. So they have four different links. Okay, I've actually never tested that, so I can't say for sure. I don't I see any reason why it shouldn't work, but. Is there anyone else here that has link skills? Uh, not in any ship that can boost Sphinx, I think. Hmm. 
I, I mean, think it's worth it testing work. sometime, but uh, yes. it's the only, I mean, I know uh, for uh, like big capital fleets, uh, the, uh, like the bomb dreadnoughts usually have a carrier with uh, armor links on them armor, to yeah. give extra bonuses and things like that, but otherwise you usually don't have armor links in the shield fleet anyway, so. Yeah, that's, that's what I meant. That's what I was just curious about it, that's all. And you should, I mean, there is actually an other uh, link type as well. There are mining links if you, that you could potentially have. So you could have five different. Yeah, that is true. And there's uh, an, one more kind, which is not really part of this class, but I can mention it anyway. Titans have something called Spatial Phenomena Generators which works kind of like links, but they affect everyone on grid, both friend and foe. I think it's everyone in system, no? Uh, grid, not system. I think it's, it's 20,000 kilometers or something. Ah, okay. But that's a bit outside of the scope, because I don't think too many are Titan pilots here. Well, anything else? Otherwise, I'll round this off. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, this class will be uploaded when I have time to edit it. So, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Toshi.